everyone, it's Michelle Lupton here and I have a video for you today with four cards. I've had quite a few um, requests on um, Instagram mainly um, asking me to make uh, videos of certain cards and they're all cards that use alcohol inks or alcohol pearls. So on these cards I'm actually using both alcohol inks and alcohol pearls together on panels of Yupo. So I'm starting with a puddle of alcohol blending solution. Not heaps and heaps of it, but enough to get the inks moving around a fair bit. And you'll see that I'm using my um, Tim Holtz spritzer tool that's um, meant to be used with uh, distress markers um, to move these inks around. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a bit of a cold, so I've been um, sucking on cough lollies all day. Anyway, the colours that I'm using on this particular panel, uh, the alcohol ink colours are salmon and pink sherbet, and the alcohol pearl colours are enchanted and intrigue. So I really wanted a sort of girly girl pink um, panel for this one. Um, I've got a um, one-year-old birthday party to go to um, soon and I needed a birthday card for a little girl. All right, so uh, this next one, <clears throat> I'm doing sort of yellows and oranges. So I'm starting with uh, salmon and peach Bellini um, alcohol inks, um, again with the blending solution. And then I'm going to be adding alchemy. Now alchemy is a very, very bright yellow. But I find that out of all of the uh, alcohol pearls, this yellow colour has the most shine. It's just the most amazing shine. Whenever I make um, uh, rainbow cards with alcohol pearls, I always find that the yellow just um, sort of screams at me because it's so shiny. I love it. Um, so you can see that I um, sometimes end up with bits of um, colour that I think is a bit too intense because I'm not going for a very intense look with most of these. So I just add a little bit more of the blending solution to spread out the colour and make it a little bit um, less intense. Now with this one, <clears throat> I, um, I started with these colours, but as you'll see... The first colour that I actually add is this indigo colour. Now, indigo is one of my favourite colours of distress uh, inks. Not distress inks, alcohol inks. Um, it's very, very dark. As you can see, I've only added two drops of the colour here, and I've spread it out heaps. Now, one th cool thing I like about this particular um, alcohol ink is that when you spread it out, you do see a whole lot of the constituent colours. You can see even before I added that tranquil blue, um, which is an alcohol pearl colour, you could already see um, a sort of um, turquoisey colour and a slightly purple colour along with the indigo blue. So you don't really need to add heaps of separate colours when the um, indigo colour will just spread out and sort of divide up into all those separate colours all itself. So that's pretty cool. I decided I needed a little bit more of the alcohol pearl here. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I just wanted some extra shine. So all of these panels are going to um, have the shiny um, alcohol pearl on them. Now this last one... I wanted um, a panel that was a lot paler, so I didn't go with the indigo this time. What I'm using here is aqua and sailboat blue. And so I'm spreading it out um, a fair amount here. I'm still going to add the tranquil, which is the alcohol pearls. Um, but um, a lot paler than the last panel. Okay, so um, a lot of the time when I do the alcohol inks, I add extra bits of colour on top of the first layer, um, sometimes to add more intensity of colour, 
but usually just to add more texture. And you can see when I've added the sailboat blue for the second time on this one, getting a whole lot more texture than I got for the first time. And that's because the first time I was adding straight onto the top of um, the blending solution, but the second time there was less blending solution there. <clears throat> All right, so for all of these cards, I'm going to be following a sort of a pattern. <clears throat> I'm going to have some kind of cute animal and um, I'm going to have some kind of white die cutting um, to sort of break up the background. So right now I'm stamping the animal that I wanted. So the stamp sets that I'm using, um, this one uh, is called Up and Away and I'm using two stamps from here so the little cute animal and its umbrella and I'm just doing a tiny little bit of masking over the hand so that I can stamp the umbrella and it doesn't look weird with the handle of the umbrella covering up his little hand. Um, I'm also going to be using um, Fly With Me from Mama Elephant. <clears throat> I'm also using um, tweet friends from My Favourite Things, which is a cute little birdie in the top left. Um, and also the Lift Me Up from Reverse Confetti, which is where the giraffe comes from. So I just laid out the colours um, next to the animal, so the background panels, I mean, next to the animals that I wanted to use so I could sort of plan out my colouring. Now the colouring is nothing special. I used Copics for all of them. I did a little bit of blending but not very much. Most of them is just sort of fairly flat colouring and then I just fussy cut them out. <clears throat> so I'll cut all that out of the video because it's just a bit boring watching me fussy cut stuff out. And now I'm going to start constructing these cards. So all of the cards were put onto a um, card base, a top folding card base um, of Nina Solar White. And they're all cut to, um, you've probably heard this in my videos before, five and a half inches tall and four and an eighth inches across. That's because the UPO that I have is A4. It's not US letter. So <clears throat> to get the width um, to allow me to cut it down into four pieces, it has to be five and a half by four and an eighth, not four and a quarter. All right, so what I've done is I've cut some white panels for using Lawn Fawn Stitch Hillside Borders. I use these dies so much. I don't know what I would do with my card making if I did not have the Stitch Hillside Borders dies. Oh, my God. Um <clears throat> And I've just layered them over um, the bottom of the card. I've added a sentiment from um, Stampin' Up. Um, unfortunately, a, a few of the sentiments that I'm using today are actually discontinued. They're quite old stamps, um, but they were just little cute stamps that I wanted to use. Um, and then I've added the um, animal with some um, dimensional adhesive, um, also from Stampin' Up. Now for this one, um, I also use the stitched hillside borders um, and you can see I'm sort of adding the pieces at the bottom. Um, no, I haven't actually cut them necessarily to be the right width um, so that I can actually have a bit of a wiggle room with them and decide what angle I want to put them um, on. And I generally stick the first, uh, the front panel down first, but I only stick the bottom of it so that I can then slide the panel that's hiding behind it, um, <clears throat> behind the top part of it. I don't know if I'm making sense here. Um, so that I ha can sort of decide exactly where I want it to sit. And then I just cut off the excess by turning the card over. <coughs> Excuse me. And cutting off near the edge of the piece. So again, I'm adding a sentiment. All the sentiments that I'm adding, I'm stamping with Versafine Onyx Black uh, ink. The um, animals, when I first stamped the images, I actually used um, Gina K um, Amalgam ink uh, because it's Copic safe, Copic friendly. Um, all right, so with this one, um, I didn't use the Stitch Hillside borders. 
what I did was I cut a whole lot of the puffy clouds from memory box and I cut them from white cardstock and also from some vellum. So there's two different types of clouds here. There's two different types of uh, sizes of clouds and some are in vellum and some are in cardstock. Now the vellum, um, I didn't want, um, of course, the adhesive to show. So um, I basically stuck down just one edge of each of the pieces of vellum um, in a place that would be hidden by either the animal or the um, uh, umbrella that the animal is holding or by one of the other clouds. So you can see here I'm using lawn fawn glue and I'm just putting little bits of glue on either edge that are going to be hidden. Um, the other clouds, the clouds that I've cut from cardstock, I'm just using my tape runner glue to stick those down. <clears throat> Now the one, the vellum that was hanging off the edge, um, I actually folded that round so that it wouldn't come off. And the large cloud in the top left, I chopped the edge off and decided to use it in the bottom right, because waste not, want not. Um, I just thought it'd be nice, uh, it'd be good to actually cover up a little bit of the um, adhesive on one of the smaller um, vellum clouds. Okay, so that's that card. Now on some of the cards, I actually um, didn't finish there. I added a little bit of Wink of Stella in a couple of different places. So I'm adding a bit here. Now this particular Wink of Stella um, pen, brush pen, <coughs> is so close to empty at this stage. I also went around the clouds with it as well. <coughs> Sorry about my coughing. Um, I actually went back... A bit later on and added a bit more of the Wink of Stella just because that pen was almost empty. What I generally do with my Wink of Stella pens, um, a trick that I learnt from Jennifer McGuire, who doesn't learn awesome tricks from Jennifer McGuire, and um, what she did was once a Wink of Stella pen seemed to be empty, is you take the brush end out and all the sort of stuff that's attached to it, pull it out, and just refill the pen with water because there's so much glimmery stuff stuck in the bottom of the shaft of the pen that you can get um, a second life out of it. Now, once you've added the water, it's not going to be quite as intense as um, the undiluted Wink of Stella, but it is still very useful. So you can generally get sort of two lives out of it. Now, with this sentiment, this sentiment is from um, Avery L, uh, a set called So Happy. I really like this sentiment, but I decided I wanted it curved to match the stitched hillside border um, die from Lawn Fawn. So I just mounted it on my um, acrylic block on a bit of a curve so that it would, um, yeah, just have a little bit of interest there. <clears throat> now, as you can see, I'm adding a little bit more Wink of Stella here and then I decided to add more to the umbrella on this card and I decided to add a little bit to the flower on the little birdie. So after that I was pretty much done. So uh, four cards uh, to share with you today all of a similar kind of layout or theme um, and I hope you enjoyed. So thank you very much for um, watching. Um, I apologize for my voice and for the coughing, but can't be helped. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.